Hello friends, we have started discussing DNA, deoxyribose nucleic acid. We discussed about basic features of BDNA. Then we also compared different forms of DNA, ADNA, BDNA and ZDNA. In this video, we are going to discuss DNA, a genetic material or how it was found that DNA is a genetic material. So today we know that DNA is the genetic material. It stores the genetic information and carries this genetic information from generation to generation. That is from parents to offspring. So it is hereditary material. Except some viruses, DNA is the genetic material of all currently known living organisms. So most of the living organisms have DNA as the genetic material. But how DNA was discovered as genetic material or how it was found that the genetic material that is present in most of the living organisms is DNA. It was found through certain experiments and observations. So to find that what is the genetic material, certain experiments were done and today we are going to discuss about series of experiments which led to the conclusion that DNA is the genetic material. In this series of experiments, the first is Griffith's experiment which was performed in 1928. Griffith studied the transformation in pneumococcus bacteria. He studied two strains of pneumococcus bacteria. One is R2 strain whose surface is rough. It is without capsule and it is avirulent. That means it does not cause disease. And second is S3 strain whose surface is smooth. Capsule is present and it is virulent. That means it causes disease. It causes pneumonia. So let us see the experimental detail or experiment that was performed by Griffith. So first of all, he took the live R strain and injected into the mouse. Mouse survives. That means no disease was caused. Then the live S strain was taken. It was injected into mouse and mouse dies. It means this S strain which is virulent, it causes disease. And because of this pneumonia disease, the mouse dies. Then heat killed S strain was taken and injected into mouse. Mouse survives because the virulent strain is heat killed. Hence it does not cause disease in the mouse and mouse survives. And then this S strain which is heat killed is mixed with R strain live and injected into mouse. Then mouse dies. So here the S strain which is virulent is heat killed so it cannot cause disease when it is mixed with R strain which is live this is also a virulent strain and then injected into mouse the mouse dies that means this mixture causes disease in the mouse and hence mouse dies Griffith also recovered live S strain bacteria from these dead mice so from the diseased mice or from the dead mice, live S strain was recovered. Though the S strain that was injected was heat killed. So on the basis of this, what he concluded that R strain had been transformed by the heat killed S strain. So the heat killed S strain, it transforms R strain into the S strain which causes disease in mouse. And because of this, live S strain was recovered from dead mice. Then the question comes, how it is possible? Due to transfer of transforming principle from S strain to the R strain and R became virulent. So it is possible only if the S strain transfers certain transforming principle to the R strain as a result of which R strain is transformed into S strain which causes disease in mouse. So this transforming principle or the transforming material passes the genetic information. But at that time he was not able to identify that transforming material 
which causes the transformation of R strain into S strain. But this experiment set the stage for the further work and the next work or the next experiment that was done was by Avery, MacLeod and McCarty. In 1944, Avery, MacLeod and McCarty performed the experiment. What they found that when live R strain is injected to mouse, so mouse survives. That means it does not cause disease. So what they concluded that no transformation of R strain into S strain is taking place. Then they mixed this live R strain to heat kill S strain and when it was injected into mouse, it causes disease in the mouse. So it means that R strain is transformed into S strain and there is certain transforming material which causes the conversion of R strain to S strain. So they perform further experiments to find out this transforming material. For this protease was added to heat kill the strain. This protease degrade protein. So now protein is not there. Then live R strain was added and what it was seen that R strain is transformed into S strain and it causes disease. It means in the absence of protein the transformation of R strain into S strain takes place hence protein is not the transforming material. Similarly to the heat kill S strain RNAs was added and this RNAs degrades RNA. Then to this live R strain was added. Again transformation takes place that is R strain is converted into S strain or R strain is transformed into S strain and it causes the disease in the mouse. So it was concluded that this Transforming material is not RNA because RNA is already degraded. Then to this heat kill S strain, DNA was added. So now DNA causes the degradation of DNA. To this live R strain was added. And what is was seen that R strain is not transformed into S strain and hence no disease is caused in mouse. This was in the absence of DNA because DNA has already degraded DNA. So it was concluded that DNA causes the conversion of R strain into S strain or the transformation of R strain into S strain. Hence, the transforming material is DNA, not protein or RNA. Third experiment in this series was Hershey and Chase experiment. It was done in 1952 on bacteriophage viruses. And the basis of this experiment was DNA contained phosphorus, not sulfur, and proteins contain sulfur, not phosphorus. And when FAS, that is bacteriophage viruses infects bacteria, genetic material is inserted and protein coat remains outside. Let us see this experiment in detail. Some viruses were grown on medium containing radioactive phosphorus and some viruses were grown on medium containing radioactive sulfur. So some viruses have radioactive DNA since DNA contain phosphorus and some have radioactive protein because protein contains sulfur. And then these radioactive viruses were allowed to infect bacteria. In this case E. coli. We know that during the infection viruses inserts the genetic material and the protein coat remains outside. This was followed by removal of viral coat by blending and then centrifugation was done to separate viral particles from bacteria. Now the observations. Then the bacteria was studied and it was found that bacteria which was infected with viruses having radioactive DNA were radioactive. 
and those infected with viruses having radioactive protein were not radioactive and earlier we have seen that viruses inserts genetic material but not protein coat. Hence it was concluded that DNA is the genetic material of fuzz and not protein. Now let us understand this in detail with the help of the figure. This is bacteriophage viruses. Here protein coat is radioactive and here DNA is radioactive. Then it was allowed to infect bacteria. Genetic material is inserted. Then the blending that is separation of the viral coat from the bacteria and centrifugation that is separation of the virus materials from the bacteria is done. Then bacteria was observed here in which the protein coat of the virus was radioactive the bacteria is not radioactive but in this case where the DNA is radioactive the bacteria is radioactive so it was concluded that DNA is only inserted in the bacteria not the protein coat and hence DNA is the genetic material not protein so this is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel and keep watching. Thank you.